A warm welcome to all of you to this Clucor webinar, Make New Discoveries with Clucor's Visualization-Based Software. Um, together with me here today is Professor Magnus Fontes, one of Clucor's founders, and he will be the main speaker of today. In your panel, you have a Q&A uh, button, which you can use to pose questions to us. Uh, feel free to do that and we will answer questions at the end of today's webinar. So again, a warm welcome, and now I leave the sound and picture to Magnus. Yeah, thank you, Carl Johan, and uh, again, a warm welcome to everyone. So, um, I will talk a, a day, a today about the visualization and statistical analysis, and you will you will see how you can use visualization to represent and to interpret big data sets, and at the same time how you can use uh, statistics, so mathematical algorithms, statistical algorithms to support you uh, when you when you do this. So, of course, uh, research in, in life science and in biomedicine has changed dramatically over the last years or decades, and we see a, a, an exponential increase in, for instance, microprocessor capacity. This is Moore's law that you see to the right on the slide, showing that we have an exponential increase in uh, processor capacity. At the same time, hardware manufacturers like Illumina, that um, they also uh, work according to or better than Moore's law. And of course, Illumina this summer announced uh, the thousand dollar genome less than 15 years after the human genome project was uh, finished. And this, of course, uh, makes it possible to, to, to do uh, life science in a new way. And life science is, is today often very data dependent. You collect huge amounts of data and then you want to transform that into useful biomedical knowledge. This is uh, a hard task. You are, you are looking for a needle in a haystack, and there has been many articles that have alluded uh, to this. We some, see some of them uh, uh, here. So how would you interact with and look at your data? I think the vital message today is that you, as biomedical researchers, you should be able to do this yourself, and the best and maybe a uh, most interesting way to do this is, is through different types of visualizations. This makes it possible for you to immediately react and use the, the biomedical knowledge that you have. Because one needs to understand that there, there is a famous uh, site by the statistician Box. He said that all models are wrong, but some are useful. And that is, of course, completely true. All models are wrong, but they can capture some interesting aspects of the reality that we are, are looking at. Uh, there is an interesting article by Yaunidis from Stanford titled, Why Most Published Research Findings Are False. Published, published in PLOS Medicine uh, almost 10 years ago. And uh, this alludes to, for instance, things like genome-wide association studies and why it's very, very risky to draw uh, conclusions if you don't have sound statistical, uh, a sound statistical basis for, for what you do. Uh, you need to use things like false discovery rates and other statistical uh, uh, statistics to support uh, uh, your your uh, research and we will come back to that so what can and should bioinformatics provide uh, I mean bi bioinformaticians are often sub optimally used in re in research organizations both in in pharmaceutical companies and in academia Many bioinformaticians, there is a funny paper, I, I, I put it up here, how not to be a bioinformatician. You can read it very quickly because it's only 10 bullet points. So it's a one page uh, article more or less. And these 10 bullet points, sadly enough, 
uh, describe pretty well how it's often uh, bioinformatics is often done even at high high quality research labs around the world so but in order not to be a bioinformatician you should work in isolation you should not share code you should etc etc et and this is sadly enough often the case and this is often because bioinformaticians are used in a in a wrong way in organizations they have to uh, build uh, uh, ad hoc pipelines answering uh, almost ad hoc questions from biologists and this should change biologists should be able to interact with their own data and bioinformaticians should be able to uh, involve in 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 research in a much better way uh, so the solution is is that we should have uh, easy to use software for uh, biomedical researchers, easy to use, easy to learn, with strong uh, and different types of visualization to support the biomedical researchers, both in exploration and in validation studies. And at the same time, uh, in order to have some uh, Reproducibility in this, we must have objective statistical measures such as the projection score that I will present to you today. That is a, a novel and innovative algorithm that is uh, in Clucor Omics Explorer. We, uh, you can use Clucoromics Explorer to do many, many things. Uh, determining discriminating variables between case control and many other settings. Identify new subgroups in exploratory analysis. Find correlated variables, very easy. Uh, evaluate system biology information coming from pathways. Create publication-ready reports. Identify variable networks, again, pathways working with things like gene set enrichment analysis and other tools, uh, gene ontology. Select variables based on things like fold change. And of course, also identify artifacts and potential outlayers in your data. And uh, I will show you today a couple of examples. And these are videos that we will look at. They show you the real workflow, uh, real time. Uh, so it's, it's just recorded from the computer screen. This is what you will experience if you try the software yourself. It is exactly as easy and fast to use as you will see in these uh, videos. Uh, the software can be used on many different data types like gene expression data, clinical data, protein data, proteomics, and you see a list here on the screen. Uh, basically, you can put in any multivariate data, small data, medium-sized data, and really big data. And of course, that de depends on, on your machine, but even on a normal laptop, you can use very big data sets and you will have interactive behavior of the software. We support a lot of different file formats, uh, cell files, chip files from FMetrix, uh, Agilent text files, BAM files, uh, gene expression omnibus soft, soft files, etc. So basically, uh, the uh, Clucoromics Explorer is platform independent. You can use uh, text files coming from any platform, for instance. The first example that I will show you uh, today comes from Gene Expression Omnibus. It's downloaded from Geo. It is uh, uh, Drosophila, so fruit flies. We have uh, three different species and one hybrid, and we uh, they have looked at uh, uh, development stage. So there are four different development stage from pupal to 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 a full grown um, uh, fruit fly. And this is a uh, microarray uh, chip. So we have something like 7,375 different genes. And we have these four different uh, species and 12 samples from each describing the development stage in, in, this, um, uh, in this experiment. What you will see in the movie that will come or in the video that will come is visual rep representations. Here you see uh, a very, very small 
uh, spreadsheet up to the left. This is just a little part of the, the uh, data. So every column here is, is a sample, uh, and every row is, is a gene. So we have 7,000 plus uh, rows and uh, 4 times 12 uh, columns. So how would you look at that? I mean, nature does it by this genotype to phenotype map. We have a, a 3D visualization as a fruit fly of, 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 of this data. But of course, for a biomedical researcher, you can visualize it in many different ways. And we will see examples of this in the videos. Here we see uh, in the um, lower left, we see the, the, a heat map, which I guess you all are all familiar with, with the hierarchical clustering. It's very easy to do this in ClueCore with just a couple of mouse uh, clicks. Uh, and you also see a principal, principal component analysis plot. Uh, a principal component analysis plot is a way to visualize the full data set in, in lower dimension. It is a way to reduce noise in a high dimensional data set and represent it in an optimal way, preserving as much variance, information if you wish, as possible in this three dimension. And when you interpret such a uh, principal component analysis plot, what you basically see are distances in this plot. And if uh, samples, so every little ball here in the, in the plot corresponds to a sample, so that is a fruit fly. And if two balls are close together, that means that these samples have similar measurements in the variables that are underlying this plot. So, uh, in order to, to, to do uh, useful selections in, 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 in such plots, for instance, if you want to do variance filtering, often uh, you have many variables present and you want to select the ones that have most uh, variance over your data set because they could possibly be very interesting in, in, in discriminating between uh, subgroups present in, in your data set. You need objective measures to do so. The projection score that is implemented in ClueCore is one objective way to do this. It will guide you when you do uh, variance filtering and you can select an optimal value where you objectively uh, get as much information as possible into your three-dimensional visualization. This means that uh, if there are patterns in your data set that are not random, then uh, this is an optimal way to v visualize these patterns. The projection score is published in BMC Bioinformatics in 2011, and the basic uh, philosophy is that you look at the signal-to-noise ratio in your data set, you compare with what you would have gotten, would your data have been uh, random, and then you optimize, so you, you, you show the projection that is as far from random as possible uh, within the, the settings you have. In ClueCore Omics Explorer, that is, that is uh, represented by a single number, the projection score, which you will see in the video that comes now uh, as a, uh, in a little box in the statistics window as a number and that number is also colored and it's red if it's the if the projection score is fairly low it is yellow if the projection score is a little bit better and it's green if the projection score is really good but as you will see in the video you can optimize over a projection score so we are now ready to uh, look at the first video and i recall these are then development stages of uh, drosophila four different types uh, but we will focus on discovering uh, uh, underlying biology for these uh, development uh, stages. So please, can we have the first video? In Clucoromics Explorer, there are many different ways to visualize uh, data. Here we use principal component analysis and we have plotted two first principal components and we now perform variance filtering. So we filter away the variables that uh, do not have a lot of variance over uh, the entire data set. 
and we optimize over projection score. We have now selected the optimal projection score and we look at the different annotations. We color here according to uh, development stage and we clearly see that the projection score has selected a projection where we can see the different development stages. We now create a synchronized principal component analysis plot and we have variables to the left and samples to the right. We will now perform an ANOVA. So we are looking for the variables that best discriminate between the four different development stages. To the left we see the variables, to the right we see the samples. A synchronized principal component analysis plot has the particularity that variables uh, that are pointed in the same direction as samples have a high expression level in that sample. We see these on a group level here where we color Okay, so um, in this video uh, you, you saw how you can use uh, principal component analysis both for samples and for variables. And the unique feature in Kukuromics Explorer is that these uh, plots, PCA plots, principal component analysis plot for samples and variables, they are synchronized. And, and as you saw, uh, variables that have a high expression level in one group, particular group, they are pointed in the same direction as that group and that makes it possible for you to interact directly with your samples, with your variables and uh, in, in this way uh, draw, immediately draw uh, relevant uh, biological uh, conclusions. So, uh, as a summary, the, the, the uh, user interface uh, is, is, is very easy to, to understand. Uh, everything is updated uh, immediately. Visualization can guide you. It, it guides you not only when you do exploratory analysis, it also guides you when you do uh, confirmatory uh, statistical analysis you see when you do a t-test, when you do a hypothesis test, you see that that uh, these groups separate. They, it makes biological sense. So you, it's possible for you to interact with your uh, data. Uh, okay, so we have some problem here. There was no sound. I got a uh, I got a, a, a note here from the organizer that there was no sound for the video. Uh, so I will need to describe what you will see before and after the video. So now I'm very sorry, but this is after the video in this, in, in this case. So what you saw here was actually a little bit what I described before the video. It, it, it was you optimize over projection scores, so you filter by variance. This was what happened. You saw the groups clearly separate and possibly you saw also some small subgroups. That was actually within the, the, the four groups you saw forming, you may, may, might have seen some small uh, subgroups. So that was actually the different species forming small subgroups. Uh, and I illustrated how you could use uh, the synchronization of variables and samples uh, to select uh, variables that had high expression level and we colored according to that uh, expression level. So what I will do uh, before the next video then is uh, I will uh, describe what, what you will see in, 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 that, in that video. And actually the next example that you will see is uh, transcriptome data, so again, uh, microarray data. This time it's from dengue patients. So uh, these are uh, patients' uh, samples coming from uh, Thailand. 
and uh, it is a problem in in dengue to do, to 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 uh, classify and to 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 separate dengue from severe dengue or hemorrhagic uh, dengue in uh, this data set we have uh, healthy control one group of healthy control we have one group of convalescent we have one group of dengue patients and we have one group of hemorrhagic dengue patients and this is whole blood and there are uh, something like 54,000 uh, variables from the beginning. Uh, th these, uh, this is then from a probe IDs from the microarray. And uh, what you will see uh, in, in the middle of the demonstration it, uh, is that we collapse these probe IDs down to genes. This is both in order to be able to represent every variable at, by its gene name, which you as biologists might uh, 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 be familiar with. I mean, very few people know probe IDs on, on for instance, affymetric ships, but it also makes it possible to do pathway analysis where the identifications for the genes are, for instance, by gene name. Uh, so in, in the next uh, video, you will see both a PCA uh, plot. We will optimize over a projection score to begin with. Uh, you will then see two groups uh, forming. This is uh, 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 two two clear groups that, that are, will be separated by the second principal component. In order to discover what, what these two groups are, we use a tool in, in Clucoromics Explorer that is classification. So we will invent or put uh, in a new annotation and we will then classify these two groups that we discovered just by variance filtering and optimization over the projection score. These uh, two groups, we will then do a T uh, test, so a two group comparison to discover what variables that best discriminate between these two groups. And you will see in the video uh, that when we do that and we just look at the variables that correspond, uh, that best discriminate between the, the, those two groups, uh, they are, all these variables are located on the X and Y chromosomes. So, so these are men and women. We have discovered gender. In order to then go on with the analysis, you will see uh, how we um, uh, el eliminate that effect in the data set. So we eliminate uh, uh, gender. That makes it possible to, to elimination here means that you, you simply uh, uh, do when you do statistical testing later, you simply test if 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 for instance these uh, the groups you want to 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 look for, if they are separated separated by an effect that you are looking for and not by uh, also because they are, uh, are the effect of being men and women. So you elim eliminate that. That is the same tool that you would use if you for instance have a batch effect in your data set to eliminate that batch effect and look for true biological uh, signals. So uh, um, this is what will happen next. We do a, a elimination of, of gender and then we do a rank regression. And you will see this both uh, uh, with a heat map and with a PCA plot and you will see how we do rank regression and select the variables that best describe the ranking of healthy, convalescent, dengue, and uh, severe dengue. So these might be the variables that are involved in, in describing uh, 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 the evolve, uh, evolvement or the severity of, 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 of dengue. Uh, after this, uh, we will do a gene set enrichment analysis and you will see how we pick up the workbench of uh, uh, GSEA in Clucoromics Explorer and how it's very, very easy to do your gene set enrichment analysis. Here we do use a part of the Reactome database. So this is kind of a toy example. You can choose whatever database that you normally uh, work with. Uh, for instance, the Reactome database, of course. 
or or the MSIG uh, database or whatever database you you are uh, familiar with or your own database that that you build up of course um, and uh, I think that uh, with this we will go on to the video and I will make some uh, additional comments uh, after the the video so I'm sorry no sound uh, I will uh, again recall what what you have seen after the video so please can we have the second video so again we see a principal component analysis plot of all the samples in this Dengue data set. Uh, again, we start uh, the analysis by optimizing over projection score and we see two clear groups emerging. Uh, they are discriminated in the second principal component but they do not correspond to any annotation in the data set. For this reason, we select new annotation and we classify one of these groups as something different. So now we have the two groups uh, of the new annotation. In order to find out if this new annotation can ha have any biological relevance, we do a t-test uh, on this new annotation. This selects the variables that that best discriminate between these two uh, groups and in the variable list panel we see that all of these variables sit on the X and Y chromosome so we have discovered men and women so we mark this as gender and we can now uh, select to eliminate gender so we select uh, eliminate gender effects. This is because we are not looking for something that has to do with gender but we are looking for other uh, biologically relevant patterns. Before we go on we collapse the probe IDs on the microarray down to gene symbols uh, and we again create a synchronized plot but this time in the left panel we have a heat map and in the right panel we see the sample PCA plot. We color according to uh, disease state so these are healthy control, uh, convalescent dengue and severe dengue and we perform a rank regression test. So now we select the genes that best uh, explain uh, uh, the, the ranking we have selected between the uh, different disease states. Uh, we see clear patterns. We see severe dengue and dengue to the right and we see healthy control and convalescent to the left. And when we select hierarchical clustering in our heat map, we see clear patterns also in the heat map. So we color according to disease state. This is what we now see in the heat map. Of course, we can uh, start to build biology of this, but we can also uh, add uh, some database information. So we open the gene set enrichment analysis workbench in Cluchromics Explorer. We select the reactome database and we do a GSEA analysis. Now we look at the top uh, lists in the pathway uh, that corresponds to the rank regression we have done in our data set. And these are the top lists in the pathway and we can start to make even more biological or draw more biological conclusions from the analysis in this way. Again you see the heat map, you see uh, the variables, the corresponding variables and we can also use the, uh, the pathway information that we have gotten from our analysis when we dig further down into the data set. Cool. 
Uh, okay, so um, I am happy to announce that I actually had sound this time, and some of you confirmed that you also had it. So that that makes me uh, that make, makes me happy. It's much nicer to look at a video with sound. So uh, again, I remind you that that what you saw in this video is just a, a recording of precisely the workflow you have on your laptop using Clucoromics Explorer, and in in this example, you saw that how you only within a minute or a couple of minutes uh, did some real data exploration. You could uh, do statistical tests. You could get immediate feedback uh, that could make biological, that assured you that what you had was biologic, uh, biologically relevant. So you compared to the annotations you had, for instance, in this case, disease state, and you saw that the group separated. Uh, you could see in the heat map uh, after hierarchical clustering how the groups clustered, and you could immediately through, for instance, uh, gene set enrichment analysis, start to make pathway analysis of 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 this uh, in this data set and that is only within a couple of minutes and that is exactly how easy it is to use that makes it possible for a biologist to draw conclusions and to really mine with biological uh, knowledge mine the data set you don't need to say go to a, a biostatistician or bioinformatician and ask her or him to uh, please do this t-test and provide me with a list of genes with corresponding p-values. And then you realize when you get that, uh, that you really wanted to do something slightly different. With Clucoromics Explorer, you can do all of this yourself. And you can then go to the bioinformatician and ask much more precise questions and discuss uh, deeper research questions that uh, could be uh, of relevance for you. So I, I think it's uh, Clucoromics Explorer can also work as a as a, an excellent communication tool between bioinformaticians and biologists, and of course between uh, any any researchers that are using the software. It's very easy to uh, uh, send data, export, import, and 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 uh, communicate around uh, the data set using Clucoromics Explorer. So. A summary of what you've seen, uh, the projection score guides, guides you to, to uh, pick optimal filter settings. It is an objective way, it's not ad hoc, it's reproducible, and, and this is, uh, there are a lot of other statistics in Clucoromics Explorer that are objective and make your data reproducible and make it robust, like the false discovery rate that is in extremely important when you do multiple hypothesis testing, which you do if you work with high dimensional or big life science data. The visualizations, uh, it uh, helps you to, to do data exploration, but it also helps you to, to uh, validate that it makes biological sense when you do uh, hypothesis testing, classical hypothesis testing. We saw how easy it was to use uh, tools like gene set enrichment analysis. We saw that you could easily work with uh, uh, public data coming from gene expression omnibus. Both the data sets you saw uh, today came from gene expression omnibus. Uh, so the key benefits uh, using ClueCore is that all actions and selections are done using simple mouse clicks, checkboxes, sliders, and mouse clicks. And basic, the basic philosophy in Clucoromics Explorer that is that anywhere that it makes sense to click, you should have the a action uh, you, you, you uh, imagine. You have instant plot updates, so you, it's really uh, real time. Uh, you have interactivity, and there is a wide range of possible visual uh, visualizations. We have only seen a couple today, principal component analysis plots and heat maps. But you have bo box and whiskers plots, scatter plots, uh, histograms, etc. 
the fact that it is always visual gives you as a biological researcher full control of what happens both when you do exploration and when you do confirmatory statistical analysis. The analysis is fast and it's very easy. You can try a lot of different uh, uh, settings and hypothesis and explorative uh, ways. And it's, I hope it, it was clear that it's quite easy to use and I would also say that it, it is easy to learn and it's easy to, to remember if you've started uh, to, to, to learn it. Uh, of course, many people around the world use Cluchromics Explorer, so uh, we have more than 200 publications uh, using Cluchromics Explorer, and here you see some of the front covers uh, that Cluchor ha 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 has uh, contributed to. Uh, but of course, the most convincing thing is always to try it yourself, uh, and that is very easy to do. You go to the website of Cluecore, uh, Cluecore.com, you download and you try it out yourself, and you will get full support uh, during this uh, trial. Um, help if you need help to get your data into, into the software and help to, to use it. So uh, with that, uh, we are more or less at the end of this uh, presentation. Uh, you should try it out yourself, as we said. Uh, uh, visualization together with a lot of different statistics. And I would say that it is when you try it on your own data that uh, you will be able to evaluate if it will be a good thing for you in your research. So try it on your own data that you know well and you will make uh, biological uh, discoveries. And with that, I thank you for listening and I think I will go to some of the questions that have uh, dropped in. And I can start with uh, the first question here, that is why is principal component analysis good? Well, I mean, PCA is is not only a way to visualize things in lower dimension. I mean, basically PCA can be seen as one way to visualize in 3D a very high dimensional and very big data set. But PCA is also an optimal way, uh, at least if you have some kind of model in the, in, in the back, but a good way and an optimal way, sometimes optimal way to reduce noise in your data. And then the PCA projection, the, the visualization you see, is a faithful representation of that robust signal in your uh, data that you see. And uh, the, another question, are there any alternatives to projection score? Yes, of course. I mean, there are many ways to uh, measure uh, relevance or, 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 or amount of information. But if you do uh, noise reduction in the way that you do in PCA, then the projection score is the natural and optimal way to have a, an objective cutoff of when you s should stop filtering. There are too many uh, instances where people ad hoc decide when to stop, uh, for instance, a variance filtering. Now you have an, an uh, objective tool that gives you an optimal cutoff level. Uh, is it difficult to download data from uh, GEO, Gene Expression Omnibus? It's not. Uh, you uh, simply uh, use uh, download in Cluchromics Explorer. You can browse uh, GEO and with, uh, you just select the data set and, uh, it, uh, and you can download it directly and Cluchor converts the format into Cluchor's uh, format and you will have the data up and working within seconds. Uh, in, in Cluchromics Explorer. So uh, one other question is uh, what kind of NGS uh, sequencing platforms can you use such as Illumina's NGS or 454 etc. Well uh, currently uh, we have a direct import of BAM files so if you have done RNA-seq and you have that as a BAM, as BAM files there is direct import into Cluchor 
and you can look at expression levels. For sequencing uh, information, if you are looking for SNPs, SNVs, etc., uh, that is not in the current version. We are working on an NGS uh, version, so keep your eyes open, that will come out. Uh, uh, let's see here what kind of question we can take. Elimination of factor, what does it mean? Okay, so el el elimination of a factor is actually a linear, a general linear model. We use a general linear model to, to uh, in an optimal way, reduce uh, or eliminate uh, the effect of that, of, 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 of that uh, feature. Uh, this is a standard and, and, and well, and well um, described uh, way to eliminate factors. If you, have, if you are doing just, a, let's say, uh, we, you have only two groups, what it, it, what it does, it simply means centering of these two groups. But for more general situations, when you do ANOVA or rank regression, etc., then you put up a general linear model and you do a, a elimination of the factors. If you have only the two group, case, uh, so you eliminate uh, a two-group factor like we did for men and women, that is only mean centering of these uh, two, uh, two, two groups. This is, as all the things we do in Clucoromics Explorer, you can read about this in the reference manual. We are, also have a tutorial that comes with Clucoromics Explorer where you can have a quick start and easily start using uh, Clucoromics uh, Explorer. Um, is there a relationship between signal inten intensity and varia in the variance filtering? Uh, well, I mean, variance filtering here is simply doing that. It filters away the, 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 var the variables that have least variance over your data set. But then, of course, when you go back and, and look for signals, uh, for instance, doing statistical testing, as you might have noticed, we then included all the variables and we uh, used uh, normalization. So we actually didn't use the covariance matrix, but the correlation matrix underlying for those of you who are bioinformaticians. Uh, so then all variables were included. Um, So uh, there is a question about if you're working with small data sets, let's say 20 variables in your multivariate uh, 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 data, is this uh, Clucoromics Explorer too powerful uh, to use? Uh, of course, you can use it on as few as five or six variables and it's still extremely easy to use and very, very useful. You can do box and whiskers plots, you can uh, do uh, PCAs, you can do heat maps, hierarchical clustering, uh, scatter plots, uh, comparing variables uh, between variables. Uh, and I would say that it, it's well worth uh, to try also on uh, let's say low dimensional data where you have only five, six or, or uh, variables. With 20 variables, for sure, try it out. And I think that is the, that is the most important uh, um, advice here. Download it and use it on your own data and, and you will see if it is something that is worth uh, using for, for you. Um, There are some technical questions on the trial version, and the trial version, if I'm correctly informed, you you uh, you have uh, ten days uh, for the for the trial version, so you you are allowed to use it ten days, and uh, there are might be some uh, export options that are are. Um, not available, but uh, uh, apart from that, you have full uh, funct functionality of the trial version for, for 10 days. Um, and there are many 
questions, which is, of course, uh, I'm very happy for, for all these questions. I will unfortunately not be able to answer all of them, but I will try some, some more. Uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, so we have also a question of does this run on Mac, Mac computers and we are, uh, uh, we have already a beta uh, for uh, Mac uh, ready and we will very soon release the Mac uh, version that I can tell you. There are many, many questions coming in, and I assure you that uh, the ClueCore team, they will answer all of them uh, after the, the, the webinar, so you will get uh, feedback uh, and answer uh, uh, by mail uh, to all the questions you put. And with this, I, I close this uh, webinar, and I thank all of you uh, for uh, attending and I wish you a, a, a good day or a good night wherever you are. So thank you very much and bye.